Should you upgrade to the new M4 Mac Mini? And if you do, which model should you buy? Well, let me tell you guys, I am completely mind blown by this redesigned Mac Mini because I had very high expectations based on the leaks and Apple blew it out of the water in every single way. So let me go through the top 10 reasons to upgrade to the redesigned M4 Mac Mini. Starting with upgrade number one, the M4 Mac Mini starts with 16 gigs of RAM, yes, Finally, no more eight gigs, which is embarrassing in 2024. You now get 16, which is enough for multitasking, Chrome tabs, productivity, whatever you want. But this next part blew my mind. It's still the same price, 599 for 16 gigs of RAM. And I fully believe that Apple would raise the price by $100 because the value is just so insane and they could easily justify it, especially with the redesign. But no, the same price for 16 gigs. I mean, this is literally the best value PC of all time, especially if you consider the reliable Mac OS, the resale value, performance, features. This is the PC that you recommend to your aunt and your uncle, your grandma, whatever. This is the best PC. Now for upgrade number two, which also blew my mind, I did not expect this at all. Not even the leaks mentioned this. This is the first Mac that gets Thunderbolt 5 ports on the M4 Pro version. This is such a big surprise and it's a massive performance increase over Thunderbolt 4, which to be honest was really similar to Thunderbolt 3, it had the same speed, but Thunderbolt 5 runs at up to 120 gigabits per second compared to only 40 with Thunderbolt 4. That's just insane. And the cool thing that I really like is that the base M4 chip gets three Thunderbolt 4 ports, which is cool because I thought maybe they would just give you two of them, but they give you all three. And then if you get the M4 Pro chip, you get three Thunderbolt 5 chips. This is basically the ultimate upgrade for future proofing, which means you don't have to worry about new unsupported accessories coming out for the next decade. Now for upgrade number three, we of course have the redesign itself. Man, this thing is tiny. This is probably the first Mac mini that's actually super mini. Just look how small it is. It's so portable, which means it's so easy to move around between let's say two locations. Like let's say we have the office here and at home, all you need is two displays in each location and you just throw this thing in your bag. I mean, it might even fit into like some jacket pockets. It's that small, plus it's only one 1.5 pounds of the M4 model compared to 2.6 pounds on the previous M2. I mean, that is super lightweight and I can't believe that Apple fit all of that hardware and the cooling system in such a small design. It's also funny that the power button is now on the bottom, which kind of means that it was so small, they didn't have room for the power button. And the headphone jack is on the front, probably because they didn't have room as well, which is just so funny, but also so cool. And now for number four, we of course have the performance of the M4 chip, which is so much faster than the previous M2 Mac mini. Now we had the Russian M4 MacBook Pro leaks, which actually revealed the performance and it's looking like we're getting over 46.3% faster in single core in Geekbench 6, 56% faster in multi-core, which is mind blowing. And it's even faster than the fully upgraded 12 core M2 Pro Mac mini, which actually used to cost $1,600. 1300 for the 10 core M2 Pro, and then a $300 upgrade on top of that for the full 12 core version. And the new $600 M4 Mac mini outperforms it. And then on top of that, we get about 20% faster graphics performance than the M2 chip, which is actually not that great, but hey, it's faster. But now moving on to number five, let's talk about the M4 Pro chip because this is actually so much better than all of my expectations and it's gonna blow away all of my previous performance estimates completely out of the water because I expected the M4 Pro chip to be up to a 14 core CPU. And yes, I got that right, it is, but I got the core counts wrong. I thought it would be eight performance cores and six efficiency cores, but no, it's so much better. It has up to 10 performance cores and four E cores. Holy smokes. 
This is blowing my mind. I literally can't believe that they did this because the performance is gonna be insane. First up, take a look at my prediction for how much faster the M4 Pro chip would be, pretty much matching the performance of the Bend 14 core M3 Max, but now it's actually going to outperform the best 16 core M3 Max in terms of multi-core performance. What? Now moving on to number six, the awesome thing about the M4 Mac Mini is that it has up to five USB-C ports. They completely got rid of USB-A, and this is just so convenient. It's one of the things that I really love about the Mac Studios that we use for editing and our work here. It has six USB-C ports, which makes it so free in terms of having things plugged in. And the Mac Mini now has five of them, even on the base model. Now for upgrade number seven, the M4 Pro, believe it or not, starts at 20. 4 gigs of RAM versus the previous 18, which is 33% more RAM, that is an awesome upgrade, and it actually confirms that the M4 Pro chip now comes with four memory chips, compared to only three on the M3 Pro chip. And fun fact, the M2 Pro actually had four memory chips already, but Apple downgraded to three on the M3 Pro just to make the M3 Max look better. So the M4 Pro, you get four six gigabyte memory chips for 24 gigs, which is a huge upgrade for multitasking and performance. The only downside, is that they did increase this model's price by $100, but I think it's well worth it considering the redesign and everything else. Now for number eight, we have faster neural engine performance for Apple Intelligence. Yes, we already know the M1, the M2, the M3 chips, they all support Apple Intelligence already, which is cool, but the M4 series of chips are a lot faster in terms of neural engine performance, which means you can do more of the AI tasks on device instead of having to send it out to Apple's Compute Cloud Server. We already had the leaked Russian M4 MacBook Pro, and in Geekbench AI, that scored over 50,000 points in terms of quantized score. That is a lot faster than the previous M3 series, so that's a nice upgrade as well. Now for number nine, we have up to three displays supported on the Mac Mini, even the base M4 model, and you could actually support three of Apple's studio displays, which is actually kind of nuts. And then the M4 Pro version of the Mac Mini can support three of the 6K Pro Display XDRs. And it's probably just so funny to see that tiny little Mac Mini and then three massive 32 inch displays. This is just so ironic and hilarious that Apple can make tech so small. And finally for upgrade number 10, you can actually get up to 64 gigabytes of RAM on the M4 Pro Mac Mini. And that is pretty nuts actually, because it means you no longer have to buy the large and expensive Mac Studio to get this much RAM. Now this is a very big deal for those people who want to keep it simple, they want to save money, and they want to have a nice portable machine instead of spending a ton of money on the Mac Studios like we have. So now with those 10 upgrades out of the way, should you upgrade to the new Mac Mini? Heck yes you should! Upgrade! Even if you have the M2 model, especially the M1, just the redesign being so cool and small alone is worth it, let alone all the feature upgrades. The the performance upgrades, having the ports on the front, which is so convenient, it's such a nice upgrade. And in terms of which one you should buy, I personally think there are two specific models and configurations. First off, I think the base $600 model is great, except for the 256 gig storage. I think that's way too little. I think you need 512, so I would recommend the $800 model if you're trying to buy it for your family members or for yourself, for your office computer, for your kids student work, whatever, $800 is a crazy good value. And then in terms of the M4 Pro model, I would say go all the way up to the $1,800 model with the full 14 core CPU. That configuration will get you 24 gigs of RAM, which I think is enough, and one terabyte of SSD, which I think is a great amount for a machine like that, especially for future proofing. $1,800, you can't beat it. 
that's still less expensive than the M3 Max Max Studio, and it's gonna be a lot faster. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, subscribe above for our testing videos because we're gonna do a lot of videos and performance tests and everything, comparisons, very excited for that, and definitely check out one of those two videos right there, including our iMac video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.